This is a helping popularize kind of the remix and reinventing somewhat of like a rebirth for 64. Uh, while they're, the remix characters are not legal in the doubles tournament, the stages are. So yeah. we'll be using some more of these remix stages, which I think a lot of a lot of interesting changes into how teams can form, how people can combo, how edge guarding and other scenarios take place. So blue team, I believe, would be uh, Smurf and Salami, with yes. Mario, Pikachu being Huntsman and Chris Kringle. Interesting, we got a, a SPK set up for the yeah. teams here. Yeah. And one of the things that we saw at one of the previous noses was, like you said, um, just the, the use of all these stages. We saw um, the Kimmy Bros, or Kimmy Maru and Hydro. Like Beat Dexter and Mariguas. Beat Dexter yeah. and Mariguas, which it, are it, huge it, favorites. Took, took advantage of the stage counter picks and kind mm -hmm. of things the Mario Bros could do a little bit better and a little bit differently. Exactly. FD allows them to kind of throw out this fireball wall that, you know, f most characters can't yeah. take advantage, can't get around with the platforms. The platforms allow you to usually get around things. And so it just changes it up. It, I think it, it allows for character diversity, yeah. especially in the way they form doubles. You know, the chemistry. And aside from the, I mean, the obvious platforms and the way the stage looks, one of the things that folks need to bear in mind is the ledges. The ledges create for different type of DI. Like this stage in particular will create for some wonky DI, similar to some of like the other stages that have um, really harsh angles on yeah, the edges. There's the the pineappling yeah. can be in a greater effect than something yeah, like yeah. Battlefield. Yeah. Okay. So, so folks like Falcon that survive off of DI like that, it's something to look out for. But just like that, we have Pikachu cleaning up two stocks with the forward yeah, smash. Yeah, that was that was uh, even on stocks there, and then yeah, the forward smash took two, to give it a lead to Huntsman and Chris Kringle. Got some friendly fire here. So while this should be a competitive set, these I would imagine most players don't have a ton of practice. The Chris Kringle and Huntsman may have played online a little bit yeah. to warm up for this. Uh, I don't think we're going to yeah. see some crazy combos. I don't think these these are players that are focused on their team combos and their style. Uh, I mean, but everyone, well, everyone here is a pretty smart player. Uh, yes. Smurf, not a crazy technical player, but he kind of is patient. He you know, usually doesn't get caught making bad decisions. He's just also not. And what I'll add to um, you saying that folks are smart here is because a lot of folks don't have access to these stages. They just don't have ever drives. Um, we're getting better about that. But for those that don't, we see adaptation in real time throughout the tournament. It might not be during the game itself, during the set itself, but we see people observing what's going on and what they can make work. Yeah, they, they, they figure out what happened and they yeah. prepare for their loser's run or maybe they steal the set here so their next yeah. uh, their next tournament match, they usually can yeah. figure out what wasn't working, what they will do next time, yeah. how they can work around it. It's the communication, I think, that's important for a team to yeah, improve absolutely. during the tournament. And one of the things that I notice um, the earlier into the tournament, stages and characters will be popularized. So, so this what is, works, this like is what stages work yeah. and what characters work, well, you start to see more of them just because of that bias. This is an interesting situation here. Um, very tough to get back for Salami, but because of the the percent, he wasn't punished. Now, oh, that's going to be tough for him. So what was interesting about that was uh, considering the percentage that Pika and Mario at on the red team, despite them both being last stock, if they got the two hits to kill the Pika in the Mario, they would have had now a 2v1 situation mm. on the Mario. Mm. So sometimes a stock lead isn't always a strong advantage. True. Usually you always have want to have a stock yeah. and you don't want to you yeah. know, not have a stock. But being with a stock advantage doesn't show that you're in as control of the game as it looks, uh, especially if you're right. a hyper sense, because with right. a lot of these characters, let's say they have a Luigi on there, or yeah. a Falcon can get a combo going, or Fox can hit a jab up smash, mm -hmm. you can take a stock lead into a multi-stock deficit right, with exactly. two quick ones. And that's when you started to differentiate the amateur from like the better players, when because an amateur player will see low stock count equates to, Losing. we're doing great. Yeah. <laughs> but that's just not the case, yeah. because they have a strat the other team might have a strategy in mind of like stock tanking with a particular character or something of the sort and that's when you see teams get really interesting so now oh it'd be interesting to so see counter pick scenarios to here so luigi we're going to need an update on the um, starter stages i believe it's dreamland it should be the same as the remix ones right so dreamland we have uh, these. I don't know what they're called. Battlefield so and Pokemon Dream Stadium okay. and then these counter picks we have WarioWare, Kalos I don't know what all of these are called. Yoshi's Island and Final Destination is one other. And so the blue team opts to just go to Dreamland. Uh, 
it's a stage they've obviously played on a bunch. They know what they're doing. They know how it works. Uh, there's not going to be anything confu any confusion with it, which also makes double a little bit interesting. I think this gives kind of some upset potential. Uh, players who are a little bit practiced can, can be a, a more adept team with just taking advantage of minute changes in the stages yeah. that a lot of people aren't used to. Ooh. Ooh, clean clean stock. standard for Salami there, yeah. Comes right in and just punishes the other Pikachu. Back throw, ooh, oh, you gotta give that throw. to Luigi. You yeah. gotta see this, so this is what you're talking about. Uh, all these the players side. don't make bad decisions, but they also don't make the optimal decision, yeah. right? So they're kind of like in that, they're, they're mid level, there they're in that team. mid level play, yeah. and that's kind of what we see here, mid level players. Uh, but going to be, should be a competitive set, and you kind of see that here, yeah. uh, evened up. The Sometimes the best sets are not necessarily the highest level, if there's too uh, much of a disparity in the yeah. skill gap. Oh, he sets up the up tilt. Luigi gets an up tilt, gets the stock. Yep. stock. There we go. Yeah, very good. Very good combo by Salami. And it's always interesting to watch. Wow, so you got double with the up B or the down B. Watch a team cover a difficult character to edge guard. So you have folks like Mario, Luigi, Pikachu. So it's, it's interesting to watch this. Salami's had a lot of great setups here. So he's been really good in his last couple stocks about. A character, he's either spawning or a character gets past his way and he picks it up and he finishes the combo. He did it twice on Pikachu and once on Mario there. Very heads up play by Salami. Hopefully Smurf can start feeding it to him because it looks like he's made the right change to the characters. Good job there. Very, very great control here by Salami. Wow. It's kind of like yeah. I keeping, be the, keeping opposite. the other team at bay. Let Smurf hold back stock take for him. Oh, he almost gets the strong hit, but Mario's smart by Huntsman to not let go of shield. A lot of people, they, they get in a shield panic, and then they kind of release and then re grab shield. And what happens is, in a frame trap, your character will release shield and then open it back up. It yep. doesn't, it doesn't it like, buffers the shield release. And so we see, uh, you don't need to, doesn't need to up smash there. He could have fourth though, but he gets it. If he can take the Mario here, it's one stock game, you know. And he gets it, here wow, we go, 3%. This is the thing where you see a stock lead, it looked like it was three stocks to, to one, but it's not. It's you, One guy's in the middle of dying on a star finish, and the other guy's uh, getting edge guarded, and here we are. It's an even game. I wonder if this is Chris's main. It, I believe he's a Falcon Pika main. Uh, so I know he plays Falcon. Uh, I've seen him play at SmashCon once, I think. With, I wish he uh, would have opted for the DI, oh. but he went for the high ground. Kind of what we were expecting. I think Chris Pringle 